Life is a journey of faith. And Lent is a journey deeper into our faith. I'm just going to walk back in the middle of the aisle. I won't walk the whole way. And you can turn with me and imagine this procession we just did with Vivian and Roxanne. Because this is symbolic of our journey of life of faith. We enter to the church through the sacrament of baptism. And then we journey from the entrance up yeah, the whole church into the sanctuary and around the Eucharistic banquet, the table of life, the symbol of our home, our home with God. And the whole journey in between is the journey of life and of our faith. Abraham, in the first reading, was called to go on a journey. He had a comfortable, good life, he and his wife, Sarai. And God asked him, leave your place of comfort, go to the land, make this journey. And he does, not an easy journey. He only carried his trust in God's promise and goodness. He is they are our four parents in faith, not just the Christian faith, the Islamic faith, and the Judaic faith. And in the early church, we had a process to enter the church and to make this journey of the catechumen. And the, and the process was so transformative. The church said, hey, what about regular old Catholics who maybe have been baptized when they're smaller and forgotten what it's like to make this journey? So, let's design a similar process. Let's invite them to take the similar process of catechumens to be renewed in their journey of faith. And sisters, that's what you're doing. You're helping us to walk this journey. Another gospel. The gospel shows us the destination of our journey, the goal of our journey. Which in Lent, it's not giving up things. It's good to give up bad things. It's good to pick up good things. It's good to pray. It's good to be almsgiving. But what's the point? The point is that we can encounter God in God's greater glory. And so Jesus invites his close disciples, us, on the mountain. And in the Bible, mountains always represent the place of theophany. That's a big word for revealing who God is. And in surprising ways, so Moses went up the mountain Mount Sinai, and he was surprised by God in the burning bush, but not like California wildfire. Still much life, even the bush is burning. And then Elijah went up the mountain, Mount Horab, and was surprised by God, not in the great thunder or earthquake or fire or Hollywood signs, but in the quiet voice the gentle breeze and depth within. And then fast forward to Jesus' crucifixion. Up the Mount of Go Golgotha. What surprising vision of God we see? A God who dies. Yes, God dies. But that's not the end of the story. And to, show, and to show today's gospel, Jesus takes the disciples and reminds us where is our journey of life and land leading us? And the disciple was surprised by this radiant, transfigured, revealing of who Jesus is. And their eyes were open. 
So the glory of God isn't always in the movies we think. The glory of God of Jesus is Jesus becoming who he truly is before God, who he's truly meant to be. And what's God's great glory, if you ask St. Irenaeus of Leon? The glory of God is the human being fully alive and looking at God. If you ask St. Catherine of Siena, who says, if you become who God dreams for you to be, you will set the world on fire. And so the glory of God is us human beings becoming who we are meant to be. Becoming people God envisioned us to be. And so this whole journey of life and let is that process. Then there's some interesting details in the gospel. One is go up the mountain. In our lives, this Lent, create the space so God can surprise you and I. God will surprise us who God is. And that's the place of the mountain. But then don't stay up there and like the three disciples and build tents and be a little more comfortable place. The end of the gospel is go down the mountain, which is share that. Share this discovery of a surprising God who you discover God where God is not there. And share that, because when we share that, we grow with anything. We keep it for ourselves, and when we hoard, there's not, not much life. But when we share, we grow. We grow. And then, how? The voice of God says, listen to Jesus. Listen to my beloved. So whatever space we create in our life, so we can really listen to the voice of God. Very quiet in our lives. Very, very quiet. So once a week, once a week in this next five weeks of Lent, do take at least once 10, 15 minutes, don't do anything. No, don't have, even have to pray. Just say, Lord, listen. Help me to listen to you. Now, it may be hard. You might hear your own voices and all the bad voices. Listen beyond that. You get a chance to go to the parish mission. My brother Jesuit, I think, Father Richard Leonard, he's wonderful. He's came, he's came here before. That's a very good way to go up the mountain. And then the very curious thing at the end, why did Jesus tell the disciples to don't speak what you see. It's because we think that, oh, seeing God's glory is all the good stuff. But that's not the way. That's not the way of the cross. That's not what we sealed Vivian and Roxanne with. The way of the cross is through sufferings, through fears, through things we don't want to face, we don't want to look at. Because the cross, the cross is the doorway to an encounter God that we've never had before. That's not time, but I can tell you a story, and you have, you have your own stories of suffering and death-like experiences and new life. God dies. That's part of our story. But that's not all of our story. God lives and lives in us. And we, in this journey, in this going up the mountain, go down, we will shed, we'll be led to places where we're not comfortable and we will have to address things about ourselves which are not pretty. Much darker than any virus going around. And every journey of Lent is that journey. And when you face it, no, you're not alone. You are not alone. The Lord has walked this path, this journey, and the Lord has cleared the path. So we go through suffering and fear and hardship with the Lord. And it's always reaching out. And we don't have to tell our whole story to people. The Catholic tradition has something really cool. Will you pray for me for special intention? 
will you pray for me for special intention? So sisters and brothers, on this journey of Lent, this journey to be revealed who God is, who we are, God's beloved, let us pray for one another that we can go up the mountain and that we can go down. And along the way, listen. Listen to the voice of God's beloved deep within our own heart. And that voice is quiet and silent, especially when fear, discomfort, hardship, and suffering comes. This is our journey of our sisters we accompany. This is our journey of Lent.